Hello again friends, fancy a bit of news? Of course you do. In this video, we're going to look at how to turn Polaris Lance into a lethal solar fireworks dispenser, the quickest way to farm faction rally tokens, Bungie's info packs, blog posts, and all the latest, tastiest forsaken news. Let's effing well do this. The final part of the nascent dawn quest is up for grabs, completing it unlocks the Polaris Lance Catalyst and here's where things get interesting. Now to upgrade Polaris Lance into a masterwork exotic, you gotta do two things, kill a heap of enemies, no problems there, and get 50 perfect 5th kills. Now this part isn't as easy as you may imagine, let me explain. Now when you score 4 precision hits with Polaris Lance, your 5th shot deals an explosive solar round. Now a direct kill with this shot does not count towards your 50 kills, which seems a little counterintuitive, but hey, I don't make the rules. Now for a kill to count, the enemy needs to die from the solar explosive burn. None of the kills I'm getting here with my explosive solar rounds are counting towards my tally, so let's see how this is done properly. Now the quickest way to rack up these kills is to fire up a normal leviathan raid and enter the castellum. That's the very first section of the raid. The infinite cabal spawn gives you a non-stop stream of enemies to take out. So then you'll want to activate the perfect fifth shot and here's the important part, score a headshot on a cabal with full health. The direct impact to the solar shot won't kill him, but he'll succumb to the burn. If he burns out, it counts as a kill. Now, as you can see here, I'm using this yellow bar cabal to activate my perfect fifth shot. And once I have it, I then run back to the group of cabal at the bottom of the stairs, find one with full health, and score a headshot. And as you can see, he burns out and I get another kill. And then it's just a simple case of rinse and repeat. Activate your perfect fifth shot, find a cabal with a full health bar, score a headshot, and watch him burn. Yes, it's a bit of a grind, but I think it's worth it because the master work upgrade is pretty cool and if I'm honest it is kind of fun watching Cabal burn to the ground. Think of it as payback for their invasion of the city, the filthy scum. So then once you've taken out enough enemies and racked up 50 perfect fifth kills you can now masterwork your weapon and take advantage of your new perk, Dragonfly. Precision kills create an elemental explosion. Now this basically turns Polaris Lance into a solar fireworks dispenser. Not only are you getting a solar explosive round after every four precision hits, your enemies now also explode if you kill them with a precision shot. So yeah, it certainly has a pleasing visual payoff if you constantly hit your mark, but if I'm completely honest, I'd only use this weapon against slow-moving bullet sponges with easy-to-hit crit spots, or if I'm grinding Solar Singe Heroic Strikes. How about you guys? In what scenarios are you using your Masterworks Polaris Lance? Let me know in the comments section below. Faction Rally Season 3, aka quick, give me enough tokens to reach level 50 before the event ends, I need the Graviton Lance Catalyst, oh god, time is running out. So then, what's the quickest way of getting Faction Rally tokens? Well, let's first talk about the new Renown system, because this is going to help you farm those tokens like a mother-loving freak. Now, you earn Renown by completing destination events. You get one Renown for killing a high-value target and opening the chest that dropped, you also get one Renown for completing a patrol mission, and you get three Renown for completing a heroic public event. And check it out, once you collect Renown, you get a cool little animation that shows the faction you pledged to. Yes, I went for Dead Orbit, I need that goddamn Graviton Lance Catalyst. Now you can stack up to 5 Renown at a time, and as you can see here, I have 4 out of 5. It's worth bearing in mind that the more Renown you have, the harder things will get for you. Your health regen super slow, and you do less damage while your enemies do more damage. And if you die, you lose 1 Renown, so why put yourself through all this hassle? Well, if you loot a Lost Sector chest with Renown, you get more faction to tokens, 3 Renown gets you 4 tokens, 4 Renown gets you 8 tokens, and 5 Renown gets you 10 tokens. So yeah, the faster you farm Renown, the faster you can farm those Lost Sector chests, and crucially, get more tokens doing so. But there is a faster way to farm Renown, and you can do this by wearing a full set of the faction armor you pledge to, in my case, Dead Orbit. Now this time, killing a high value target will get you 2 tokens instead of 1, completing a patrol mission will also get you 2 tokens instead of 1, and completing a heroic public event will get you 4 tokens instead of 3. Now this increased Renown from destination activities means all you need to do now is complete one heroic public event and one patrol mission to max out your Renown and then you can loot a Lost Sector chest. Now, once you loot a Lost Sector chest, your Renown disappears so you need to complete the whole process again. Heroic public event, patrol mission, Lost Sector. Now, some people prefer doing this in the EDZ because of how frequently public events occur and some people prefer Titan because it's a smaller map, meaning Lost Sectors are always close by. Personally, I prefer the European Dead Zone. So yeah, you can rack up lots of faction rally tokens in very little time or you can completely ignore the renown system and have a bit of a chill grind 
you can play Crucible, you can grind Heroic Strikes, as these activities also give you faction tokens. Now, it's not as efficient as the Renown farming method, but hey, it's your choice. Happy rallies! <laughs> Bungie's latest blog post has a heap of useful Forsaken info, so let's go through it. First up, Bungie released this image detailing exactly what players can expect from the Forsaken expansion, from every new season, and from the new Forsaken annual pass. Now, the Forsaken expansion will contain a new story, a new destination, Tangled Shore, a new endgame destination, Dreaming City, new levels and power, new subclass paths and supers, a new PvE and PvP game mode, Gambit, a new raid, new rewards, new legendary gear, new exotic gear, new triumphs to collect, and new lore to discover. This expansion costs 40 bucks. Now, seasonal content is free to all players who own Destiny 2. You get seasonal rewards, special and seasonal events like Iron Banner, Faction Rallies, Crimson Days, and the upcoming Solstice of Heroes. You also get quality of life updates and new Crucible maps and modes. Now, the annual pass, should you choose to buy it, will cost you an additional 30 bucks and contain three premium content releases over the course of the next year. Black Armory, Joker's Wild, and Penumbra, and these releases will contain the following content. More pinnacle activities, more weapons and armor, new and returning exotics, more endgame challenges, more raid layers, unique vanity rewards, more triumphs to collect, and more lore to discover. Now guys, I've already made a video breaking down everything in that image. It's well worth a watch if you haven't already seen it. It's basically everything we know about the Forsaken expansion. 14 minutes of brand new info. I've linked it in the description box below, and I'll also link it at the end of this video, so all you gotta do is click the screen. Prepare for an info explosion. Next up, some useful faction rally info. Now we've just seen how you can gain renown, well this is how you lose it by being defeated by an enemy, by fast traveling, by going to orbit, or by logging out of the game. So yeah, if you've got renown, be careful. Next up, Bungie's identified the following issues. Some faction rallies ornaments cannot progress when completing the lost sector on Mercury, so yeah, you may want to avoid that particular lost sector for now. Ornaments requiring players to defeat Hive with melee abilities sometimes don't progress. This most commonly occurs on the Arc Strider subclass Way of the Wind, so yeah, that's worth knowing. <laughs> Okay, so let's clear up some of the confusion about the Forsaken expansion and the annual pass. Now, you need to have Destiny 2, Curse of Osiris, and Warmind in order to play Forsaken. If you own none of those and were hoping to simply purchase Forsaken, Bungie has special bundle packages that they'll reveal near the game's launch on September 4th. Now, the standalone Forsaken expansion costs 40 bucks. The expansion plus the annual pass costs 70 bucks. If you already own the current Curse of Osiris Warmind expansion, you still have to pay for the annual pass. It's a completely separate thing. In fact, Bungie's community manager Cosmo had this to say. The content in the annual pass replaces the content in the expansion pass. We currently have no plans to reintroduce things like Warmind during year two. So yeah, if you want to continue your content fix after Forsaken drops, you're going to need to purchase the annual pass. And for 80 bucks, you get the digital deluxe edition, which contains the Forsaken expansion, the annual pass, plus an Awoken Legend set. Next up, this tweet from Bungie's design lead, Lars Bakken. We've seen a lot of people asking if Gambit is match made. The answer is yes, absolutely. We want everyone to be able Able to get into it at any time and play around for funsies or for serious and obviously reap the great rewards. Can't wait for everyone to try it out. Hashtag Gambit. Next up, this tweet from community manager DMG. We're well aware that some heroic strike modifiers are a bit painful. Blackout, glass and grounded. Teams are looking at a potential tuning pass for July update. No additional info at the moment, but we'll keep you updated when more information is available. Next up, we have yet another tweet. This time from Sandbox Design Lead Josh Hamrick. He says, for your information, when Lars and I both refer to machine guns in today's video, Doc, we were talking about auto rifles. Just wanted to clear that up sooner rather than later. That being said, your thunderous excitement has been noted, winky face. Now, could this be hinting that the exotic heavy machine gun from Destiny 1, Thunderlord, is returning? I hope the answer is yes. I love heavy machine guns, and I was sad to see them left out of Destiny 2. Next up, Big Short Toyworks tweeted out this image of some new Destiny 2 action figures. Let's have a look at these adorable bastards in more detail. Now, first up, a Frozen Thrall. Now, I know these things are supposed to be intimidating, but just look at him. He's adorable. I want him so I can give him a little hug and kiss his weird little head. Next up, a miniature Anna Bray. And look, she's holding the Polaris Lance. Now, we've already seen the kind of damage that thing can do, but I think you're safe. Unless, of course, this particular figure is cursed by dark voodoo magic. And in that case, you are effed, mate. Next up, we have Mokris, who has a massive effing head. Now, I've got to say, I do really like the detail on this particular model. I actually wouldn't mind having this. Now, if you liked the look of any of those particular models, 
channels. I've left a link to the pre-order details in the description box below. Yeah, so go check it out. Now, guys, as promised, I'm gonna link you to my everything we know about Forsaken video. It's packed full of brand new info, including new exotics and a cheeky little Easter egg. Here it is. Go watch it. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for heaps more Destiny 2 content. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, a tee hee hee. Until next time, Guardians.